Good morning and welcome to today's SDS-134 mission status briefing. Uh, the work on board the Shuttle Endeavour has turned toward uh, re-entry and landing. We have with us Entry Flight Director Tony Sakachi this morning. We'll start out with uh, some opening remarks from Tony and then we'll move on to our questions from our reporters. Tony? All right. Well, thanks, Kelly. Uh, good morning to all. We had a uh, very busy and successful uh, Flight Day 16 morning. Uh, on board Endeavour as the crew uh, readied both the vehicle and themselves for the return home. See, today's activities, uh, the crew woke up about 6 o'clock uh, p.m. Central Time and hit the ground running as they do typically on the end of Mission Minus One uh, day and getting the activities ready. Today we did a uh, check out of the flight control systems and that was completed with no anomalies. We also did a uh, check out of all the uh, critical uh, RCS jets that we used for entry and that all went well, also went really well. Uh, we did a uh, L-1 comm check out of the Mila ground station at KSC. And again, uh, we, uh, that went well. We basically go down to that uh, as the last part of entry. The commander and pilot, they did the standard uh, pilot uh, uh, training, uh, which uh, they use a laptop application and practice landings. Uh, throughout the day, the crew did the uh, standard cabin stow activities. We also had the opportunity today to do a, a, a secondary payload of opportunity, we call it the uh, Rambo Ram Burn Observation. It's a series of uh, Plus X jets that uh, had some satellites taking a look at that. Uh, later on today, as the last part of getting the vehicle itself ready, we're doing KU antenna stow, and the uh, crew will go to bed uh, about 9 o'clock this morning. See, as far as uh, Weather, I know everybody keeps asking that. Uh, weather is looking very promising for tomorrow. Uh, the, last, the past few days, the forecasts have been showing uh, uh, crosswinds above our uh, flight rule limits for uh, nighttime landing. And uh, uh, what has happened is, uh, uh, I guess you should say it looks very promising. And uh, we've been looking at it the last few days. This high that we've had is set up, and we uh, were able to get a good trend uh, last night and this evening. And uh, it's looking really well, and hopefully, the, and we're very confident the trend's going to stay the same for tomorrow. Uh, look, right now, the forecasts are uh, scattered at 2,500. We got winds coming out of uh, 080 at 6, peaking at 10, giving us a crosswind of 10 knots, which is uh, far below what we were predicting a couple days ago. And uh, feeling pretty good about uh, getting a better handle on the winds and feeling pretty good about where we're going tomorrow. Uh, we did take an observation today. Uh, at landing time, and uh, we would go with that. See, uh, one thing that we are looking at, there's a, a pocket of cold air being steered by this uh, uh, upper level high, and uh, possibly it'll uh, give us some showers uh, northeast of uh, KSC, but well outside our uh, 30 nautical mile uh, circle that we're worried about. Uh, quickly, the end emission plus one uh, forecast scattered at uh, 2,000, broken at 25,000. We got a, a winds coming out of 090, 8 peak to 12, and again, the crosswind is at 11 knots uh, below our flight rule limits. Uh, as far as uh, orbiter consumables, we have enough on board to support uh, out to end emission plus three, with uh, both the uh, LIO and the cryo being the uh, limiting uh, consumables. Uh, so with that, and uh, next thing I'll give it to you real quickly is the entry strategy, of course, for uh, Wednesday morning, we're gonna be calling up KSC only. Uh, try those two opportunities, and then if uh, we did have to wave off, uh, uh, the end of mission one plus one day would be Pick'em Day. And even though we have the end of mission plus three capability, we decided just be, due to the uh, duration of the mission, it'd probably be smart to get the crew uh, uh, down uh, at the end of mission plus one. And of course, uh, we're going to make sure it's safe, make sure we have good weather set up and such. Get my notes here real quick. Uh, as far as tomorrow's activities, or the, today's activities later on this evening. The crew will get up about 5 o'clock uh, today, Tuesday. The orbit prep's going to begin about, uh, and these are all central times, the orbit prep's going to begin about 10.30 uh, this evening. We'll close the payload bay doors at around uh, uh, midnight. And uh, let's see, our, I should say 11.40, and our first uh, TIG is around, uh, uh, I say our first TIG, KSC 248, is around, uh, uh, midnight 29, so uh, 0029 Central, with the landing at uh, 135 Central um, in Florida. Second opportunity, if we needed it, uh, the TIG's around uh, 206, 
um, Central Time with a landing at 3:11 uh, um, in Florida at Central Time in Florida. So I did have some ground tracks, but I wasn't going to put them up unless folks wanted to look at them. But basically, uh, that's all I have for you, Kevin. Thanks, Tony. We've been airing those ground tracks all night, and I'm sure you'll see them again. <laughs> so we'll go right to questions. Thanks very much for that opening, uh, Robert. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, I realize that the, uh, the crosswinds look less of an issue than they were before, but can you just review what the crosswind limits are um, at the shuttle landing facility? Uh, for nighttime, there are uh, 12 knots. And um, this may sound trivial, but given the, uh, the coincidence of, of it happening, um, given visibility as they come in, is there any chance the shuttle crew might see Atlantis um, rolling out to the pad? Uh, during their final approach? You know, I, I really don't know. It, I'm, I'm sure it'll be all lit up. I think the, the plan is to basically have it at the pad before they're, they land. But if they are looking out the window at the pad, I'd kind of be disappointed because they're supposed to be focusing. But uh, I really don't know, Robert, if, uh, how it all timed out. I know it's, that the uh, rollout's going to happen around uh, 8 o'clock or so. That's where it starts. So most likely they'll be, by the time, they'll be at the pad before... Uh, and that's 8 o'clock uh, uh, KSC time. They should be at the pad and uh, before the landing of Endeavor. All right, we'll go now to questions on the phone bridge, and we'll start with Denise Chow. Hi. Um, with the nighttime launch, um, the, are the limitations for safety um, much more conservative than if it were a daytime launch? Um, I noticed you said the crosswinds are um, different for daytime, but are there other considerations that would be uh, different for nighttime launches, uh, or for nighttime landing, sorry? Uh, there are a few things as far as landing gains and such. Of course, we want to make sure we have uh, xenon lights up and uh, have enough of those to give the crew uh, good visibility for landing. And of course, at the SLF, we do have uh, uh, edge, edge lighting on the uh, runway, which is required, and uh, we have some centerline uh, lighting, which is not required as long as we have the edge stuff. But uh, there are a few more constraints just because of nighttime, just to provide more visibility to the crew. Thanks. And also, um, with Atlantis's rollout, if that should get delayed somehow, is there um, anything that um, the Endeavor crew would need to do or you get other flight controllers um, in order to have more safety precautions, or does that not really get affected at all? Uh, it doesn't get affected at all. Okay, if that's all from Denise, we'll move now to Marcia Dunn. Yes, hi. Um, Tony, I was just wondering if you could give your thoughts, please, on the fact that Endeavor will be coming back to Earth for the very last time. I know that you guys have been asking folks a lot of those questions, and uh, basically, uh, uh, like the last time when Atlantis came home, uh, my focus right now is to make sure the crew gets home safely, and I'm sure once we'll stop uh, happens and we have a little bit of time to think about it, It'll all come to us uh, how we feel. But I, I really don't have any comments right now, Marsha, on that. Just, just focused on what we're doing tomorrow morning. All right, thank you. Okay, any further questions here in Houston? With not, uh, we'll wrap up our briefing. A couple of programming notes uh, starting at 5.30 a.m. Central Time today. We'll have some uh, B-roll from Expedition 27 uh, as Expedition 26-27 flight engineer Katie Coleman gets ready for some interviews. We'll have those live interviews beginning at 6 a.m. Central Time. And then Endeavor's crew sleep uh, scheduled to begin at uh, 8.56 a.m. Central Time as they get uh, one last uh, term of rest before they get up and begin final preparations for landing. With that, we'll close the briefing out. Thanks for being with us.